Dress rehearsal at Ewood Park between Blackburn Rovers and Arsenal. Not sure that when they meet in the Millennium Stadium next month that the ball will make quite such a spectacular entrance. The commentator, once he got the suit off, was John Murray. Reed. Thompson against Clichy. Thompson's beaten him. Well, it was worth a goal from David Thompson. Thompson, who missed the game at Anfield in midweek with a, a swollen knee, but he's okay to play against the champions. Now Thompson. Away by Touré. Reed. Thompson. Reed. Pedersen's header. Much better from Blackburn. Good looking cross. Pedersen did well. Very often you know when two sides are going to play each other in a in a cup game and they face each other in the league in the build-up to that match. It's very often a cagey affair. And this looks as though it might be no different. Cole didn't use cliche. And now Van Persie, best chance of the game. And it's 1-0. And that is all Arsenal needed. And Robin Van Persie, who only found out a quarter of an hour before this game that he'd be playing, gives Arsenal the lead in a first half that barely deserved a goal. Ashley Cole made it, and Van Persie finished it. Well, you have to be clever to beat this Blackburn defence at the moment, and Arsenal were. So now the onus is on Blackburn Rovers to, to come out and respond to that Arsenal goal. And uh, it is still just Paul Dickoff up front on his own. Lauren, Fabregas, this could be two. Reyes, what a fine stop by Friedel. That should have been 2-0, Reyes will know that. If Arsenal had converted this, I suspect it would have been game over. Excellent work by Friedel. Fabregas! It was a chance, although there were lots of bodies to beat with the shot. It was a packed penalty area. Here's the chance. It fell nicely to Reyes. Friedel did well. Mark Hughes not thinking about the FA Cup yet, even though he's got this great record in the competition. It's all about points for survival. Reyes beats two guy. Now Van Persie, oh, against the woodwork. Beautifully crafted again by Arsenal. Reyes, Reyes could be in. Shot like venom, really. Well, Van Persie came within, what, a couple of inches of making it 2 0 to Arsenal. He turned beautifully, but his radar was just out. And it's cliche, but Lucas Neal has managed to recover well. And Emerton is onside. Now here's some space for Blackburn. No one else in the box. Emerton went alone. And the reaction suggests it was very close. And it was close. 
Blackburn still might find something here. Kure slipped, reads in. That was the chance. A slip from Toure, and Reid dragged it. Reid knows it, he knows it. It was a hard time uh, for me after the game Southampton because uh, I, you know, I had a bad card, uh, it was stupid. But life goes on and uh, this is a great day for me because uh, I think it's one month ago. And yeah, it was a hard month, I have to uh, train hard. Keep quiet, and uh, I'm happy today. Yeah. We find it really difficult second half to really get any momentum in the game and uh, get any sustained pressure going. And uh, I just think towards the end of the game, I think we just uh, possibly uh, felt the effects of uh, our efforts over the recent weeks. And um, it's probably for the first time this year that uh, we just uh, lacked a little bit um, of, of energy, so to speak. Four weeks today, of course, you'll be in Cardiff with Blackburn. Does this mean anything? It's always good to know that you can beat your opponent, but uh, it will be a different game, but uh, we know we can beat them. Yeah, it'll be a different game. I mean, Blackburn have become a very difficult side to beat, but um, the top three tend to beat most teams, don't the, they, The nowadays? top three, the form in the last 15, 20 matches has just been unbelievable. You take Arsenal, I think it's uh, last 15 matches, 33 out of 45. If you look at the graphic here. A few graphics tonight, haven't Well, yeah, a few graphics, but normally, that gets you in contention for the championship. Then we go to the second spot, Manchester United. An incredible last 15 matches, 39 out of 45. Usually that guarantees you the title if you're Manchester <laughs> United. Uh, but right at the top of the tree, I mean, this is so tasty. Mm. 15 matches, 41 points out of 45. That is incredible. Great players, great manager, and a lot of money. I think, I think the league's now become so predictable. Top three turn up, play well. It's a problem win. for the league, really. Mm. Yeah. I can, and the other thing as well, as we talked about this before, is they're going to be in the Champions League every year, so they're going to get more money. They're going to get better players. Mm. Yeah. How, how do the rest of the teams catch up? Tell you, well, that's been the story of the last four or five years. I think the big challenge for, for Arsenal and Manchester United now is, is definitely Chelsea. Chelsea have come into the equation, and I just think they're going to get stronger and stronger. And, and we're talking about like Drogba, 24 million. Mm. Hasn't he had a great season, right? They're going by some. If they had a centre forward that was in there that was a predator, he'd score four. I mean, even you would score goals there. Steady. Even now? Yeah. No, not now. But, but, the, but, but they're now going away from yeah. the other teams like they've never Just, done before. Yeah. The gap is getting bigger but, between you, the rest. You know something else? No team at this stage of the season has got, got more points than Chelsea. Not even Arsenal last season when they were unbeaten. In the top go. flight, ever. Well, obviously, it used to be two points for a win, so. Good start. That's one of your better stats. It's Must be late. <laughs> wasn't mine. Somebody just shouted in my head. <laughs> and now, look at the Barclays Premiership table and how things currently stand. Chelsea need just five more wins to seal the Premiership title. If the Blues can keep winning, they'll be crowned champions at Bolton on April the 30th. Manchester United remain two points clear of Arsenal in the race for the second automatic Champions League spot. Everton can go 10 points clear of Liverpool with victory in the Merseyside derby and Bolton are up to fifth, just five points behind the Toffees. Norwich stay bottom after their 16th defeat this season while West Brom are now only two points adrift of 17th place Crystal Palace. The Eagles will drop into the relegation zone, zone if Southampton win at Middlesbrough. Well, it might be a little late, but West Brom appear to have found a winning formula. Free bus trips and Ernie in the driver's seat. Good night. See, Jose Mourinho and Ashley Cole have all been charged by the Premier League for their involvement in the tapping up affair. Chelsea have been charged with a breach of Rule K3, which prevents clubs from approaching players who are contracted to other clubs. Jose Mourinho has been charged with a breach of Rule Q, a general Premier League rule which sets out a manager's code of conduct. Ashley Cole has been charged with a breach of Rule K5, which relates to approaches by contracted players to another club without permission. First UEFA, now the Premier League. Chelsea's troubles are mounting. What went on in this hotel in January is now to be investigated further. 
a lawyer hired by the Premier League to sift through all the evidence relating to the illicit meeting between Chelsea and Ashley Cole has now decided that Cole, Jose Mourinho and Chelsea FC have a case to answer. Neither of the men at the top of the Premier League offered themselves up for comment after today's meeting. The only comment coming in the form of this brief written statement listing the accused and what they're accused of. The case against Mourinho, Chelsea and Cole will now be handed over to a three-man Premier League panel to consider. The panel is likely to be made up of a QC and two others from outside the Premier League board but probably from within the wider world of football. Agents Jonathan Barnett and Pini Sahavi, who set up the meeting, both fall outside the jurisdiction of the Premier League, so seem set to escape sanction, although information gathered is being forwarded to the FA, which can choose to take action against them. Chelsea FC is accused of breaching rule K3, the tapping up rule. Mourinho is charged with breaches of rules governing managers' conduct, and Cole is accused of making an illegal approach to Chelsea. Rob Beasley is the journalist who first broke the story. Chelsea went there and said it wasn't our fault really, which is a bit of a pathetic excuse. It was all Ashley Cole's fault. He contacted us and his agent contacted us and sort of bullied us into a meeting, which is pretty pathetic. Um, but that's probably why Ashley Cole has been charged. He, he was breaching rules and so was his agent, Jonathan Barnett, Barnett by attending the meeting. So uh, it's probably right that Ashley's been charged and that Chelsea have been charged, the both of them, because they've both breached the rules. And I'm sure Jonathan Barnett will get his due uh, come up in, in due course from the Football Association. And there's been this reaction from the Arsenal chairman. Well, we asked the uh, Premier League to investigate it because there was a great deal of speculation and it seemed a sensible thing to do. It's their, it's their inquiry and um, we, we just have to wait and see what they come up with. If found guilty, punishment can be anything from a warning, as in the case of Villa and Beatty, or a fine, as with Liverpool and Ziga, to expulsion or suspension from the league, both extremely unlikely. Deducting points is also an option, but Chelsea may well have already been crowned champions by the time the process draws to a close, so could there be a state of affairs where the trophy is taken off them? Gary Cottrell, Sky Sports. So, just to clarify what happens next, Chelsea, Mourinho and Cole all have 14 days to respond to the charges. <clears throat> the Premier League will appoint a three-person independent commission which will study the evidence and call witnesses. The commission will consist of a QC and two independent members expected to be respected people of the football fraternity. The Commission will then pass judgment and decide on any punishment. This will not be done by the Premier League. It's of another honour for legendary manager at Arsenal, Herbert Chapman. There's already a statue, of course, of Chapman inside the marble halls at Highbury, and now his legacy has spread further afield. Gary Cottrell reports. Formed Arsenal lived here, and from here every Sunday morning, without fail, would telephone his chairman, the current chairman's grandfather. My grandfather signed the cheques, but I think Herbert ran the, ran the whole business on a day-to-day -day basis. I must apologise this morning. I'm so husky, I can scarcely speak. Between 1930 and the time of his death from pneumonia in 1934, Herbert Chapman led Arsenal to two league championships and the FA Cup. He also masterminded the revolutionary WM playing formation and introduced Arsenal's famous white sleeve shirt. And from his home in this street in Hendon, campaigned for the tube station nearest Highbury to be renamed Arsenal. He dreamt up the idea of floodlights for evening kickoffs and first suggested the 10-yard penalty box semi-circle. He was also the first to introduce numbers on players' shirts. Half a dozen reasons why the current owners of the house are proud to have the English Heritage plaque. And there's another reason. Well, I bet I know who you support. Arsenal. It's a good job, isn't it? <laughs> da -de -da -de -da. Speaking of jolly good company, Mr Hillwood was joined at the unveiling by the chief executive of Huddersfield. Chapman led them to two cup finals and two league titles. He won the league three times in a row for Huddersfield, which is just a remarkable achievement. And we were the first club to do it, so uh, he's, uh, his name is synonymous with Huddersfield Town. Of course, Arsenal have tasted much success since Chapman. So how disappointing has this season been? No, I don't think it's too bad. We've been a little unlucky with injuries. We've had quite a lot of important players out for a long time, but seen some very good youngsters coming through. So all in all, I, I'm, I'm very happy. 
Mr Hillwood says there's big money available for Wenger this summer to help him achieve something the great Chapman didn't. Two titles back to back. Tony Campbell, Sky Sports.